going to be time at the end for some discussion and more questions. Are we in mute? It's already on mute. So I guess um, perhaps we'll get started. What do you think, Brittany? Well, I should ask, I shouldn't ask Brittany, I should ask Leslie, wherever she is. That sounds great. Are we ready to go, Sally? I am ready. Most yes. Can, can uh, everyone hear me? Let me know um, if anyone can't. I think we should be good to go. Let me just quick introduction because Leslie is a longtime plant-based Pittsburgh member. And as I said, dear mom, we love you, Leslie. And she is the health and wellness coach. She might have more information, work on food, nutrition, movement, and wellness. So we're pleased. And you'll have to introduce the person beside you, Leslie. I will, I will. Thank you. Um, Sally, I just want to thank you very much for this uh, invite and this opportunity. And Brittany, I want to thank you so much for your hard work and helping to put all of this together. As Sally said, if, if any of you are not familiar uh, with me or what I do, my name is Leslie Leopardi. I'm a certified detoxification specialist and founder of Whole Talks, where we take a holistic approach to detoxification. Our mission at Whole Talks is to provide you better health one plate at a time. And uh, Whole Talks is the process of detoxifying the body in a holistic manner through a plant-based diet, herbal protocols, and moderate exercise. Now, with that said, we are so very excited to share with you guys one of our very favorite fall-themed dishes. But before we get into that, I do have to introduce my lovely partner here. This is my boyfriend, Kevin, and he's going to be my assistant here in the kitchen today. So let's get into it. Uh, we're going to be focusing on, again, a fall themed dish using the very noteworthy and versatile acorn squash. So this is going to be our stuffed acorn squash with a garlic tahini sauce. All right, so first things first, we're going to, and we already have the oven preheated to 350. Um, so first things first, we are going to prep our garlic tahini sauce. I already have eight tablespoons of tahini measured out here. And I also have two teaspoons of a chickpea miso. Now the recipe calls for regular miso. If you happen to have a soy sensitivity like I do, you can find at Naturally Sorbels, East End Food Co-op, potentially Whole Foods, a chickpea miso. Um, and we really enjoy using miso in our dishes. That'll give you that salty flavor without the high sodium. Now, uh, I'm actually going to bring you guys in. You didn't know that this is a traveling cooking demo, did you? Um, so I'm actually going to bring you in for a close up and, and Kevin is going to show us some really neat techniques that we use in the kitchen every day to make our food easy to prepare and delicious. So first things first, Kevin is going to demonstrate how you can properly crush garlic in order to release the flavors in that garlic. And let's see, can uh, everyone see here? Yeah. All right, so we already have the cloves of garlic peeled and Kevin is just going to take the flat end of that knife and literally crush that garlic. Once it's well flattened, you're going to curve your fingers so you don't get cut and then mince that garlic. Mincing the garlic is gonna help it cook much more evenly really it's gonna help this garlic practically dissolve into the dish, giving all of that great flavor. Um, so Kevin is just gonna throw that into our bowl of tahini sauce here. And we'll get back to the garlic tahini sauce. Uh, now we're going to prep our onion. 
Um, and this is a really neat trick used for dicing an onion. Um, here, Kevin has already cut off the end that is not the stem or the root, and he's going to cut this in lengthwise. And then lay that flat end on the cutting board. At this point, he's going to make really tiny, fine slices going along the grain of the onion, but making sure that you don't cut all the way through the stem. This will help hold the onion pieces together. And what we're going to do is actually dice this onion. It's the neatest trick that he showed me and it's the perfect way to get nice diced onions in a flash. And you're gonna turn that onion and cut perpendicular to those first slices and you're gonna see that onion literally fall into perfect dice. Nice. Now, if, uh, if you have an issue with throwing away your produce ends, I know I do, you can always compost those produce ends, or you can save these ends and make a really awesome veggie broth. But for the time being, we do compost here at home, so I'm going to set this off to the side. All right. Next up. This is, this is fun. Um, I love squash, but sometimes they can be a little intimidating when you find them at the store. At least they were for me, thinking, well, how am I going to cut this? How do I prepare it? So tonight, we're gonna show you how we cut, gut, and score a squash. So in order to prevent rolling, and really ideally to prevent yourself from getting cut, Kevin is going to level this squash and, and really the goal is to just take the tiniest slice off one side so when you set it on the cutting board it's setting lovely and it's not going to move around when you cut it. Next you're going to uh, trim off both ends of that squash carefully because these are really tough hence the muscle. <laughs> Perfect and then last side Great. Now, once you have both ends trimmed, you're going to very carefully cut along one of the grooves and cut that squash lengthwise in half. Perfect. Thank you. And yes, you'll see that we have a beautiful acorn squash. And next, we're going to gut it and just scoop it with a spoon. There we go. And I'll join you. We really enjoy cooking together. Uh, we, we cook together every single night. We prep together. We even do dishes together. So I'm really grateful for my partner joining me here tonight. All right. Excellent. And then Kevin is going to score that squash for us. So what we're, we're going to do is take this knife and just like you would an avocado or a mango, you're going to make those cross little scores right along the meat of that acorn squash. Now the goal with this is we're going to baste our acorn squash with this garlic tahini sauce. And the goal is to get all of the flavors in every single bite of the meal. So by baking that garlic tahini sauce into the squash, when we fill it, no matter how far down you go, you're still getting those great tahini flavors. Now, while Kevin is doing that, I'm going to finish making our garlic tahini sauce. So in here again, we have eight tablespoons of tahini, we have a teaspoon of that minced garlic, and then I just added the two teaspoons of the chickpea miso. Now I'm gonna take a little whisk. This is literally the attachment to a handheld mixer, but you know, whatever works. It's your kitchen, you make the rules, right? All right, so once you have this tahini sauce well mixed and your squash is scored, if you have a baster, you can certainly use a baster, but a spoon works just as well. Okay. So 
I'm just going to take a spoon here and scoop this into the squash. Now, the goal is to use about half of this sauce inside the squash while leaving about half of that sauce to drizzle on top. So I'm going to help uh, Kevin out here. And you want this sauce to be well coated on the inside of the squash. The, the goal is to really not see any, well, the uh, lighting is a little bit difficult there, but the, the goal is to not see any of the squash. You want a nice thick layer of that garlic tahini sauce. Now, I have to admit that we double this sauce recipe because it's actually one of our favorite parts. Uh, we, we realized that baking it into the squash makes for such amazing flavor. And if it happens to make a little extra, great. Then you can get creative and throw that extra sauce over rice and vegetables, anything that you want, because this tahini sauce has a beautiful, uh, almost cheesy flavor and texture. So it has that great mouthfeel. And I forgot to mention with this sauce, you also wanna make sure that you cover the cut edges of that squash with the sauce. All right, perfect. Now, once we have the acorn squash basted, now it's time to bake it. We're going to put these in the oven uh, and bake them on 350 for 20 minutes. And then while I do that, Kevin is going to get our electric wok. The electric wok is one of our favorite appliances to use in the kitchen. This is what we use every single night. We rarely cook on the stove anymore because this wok, it does it all for us. It cooks quickly, evenly, and uh, it's really easy to clean too. All right, so what we're doing here, we added some more minced garlic into the wok and we're going to water saute. Now, if you'll notice our water looks, it looks kind of muddy, but it's not mud, I swear guys. Actually, we have a mixture of a tiny bit of that miso paste in here. And this is also uh, sea moss water. We'll talk about sea moss a little bit more going forward, but just wanted to let you guys know that we do still water saute here. We're not adding oil. So once we have the garlic in, the wok and we've added the water. The real trick to getting good flavor with this is to start adding in your other ingredients as soon as you can smell the garlic. So once that garlic becomes fragrant, we're going to add some diced mushrooms and then we're also going to add the onion. Now with, with every layer of ingredients that we add, we do like to add a light dusting of the seasonings that we use in the dish. That way, every ingredient and every layer has the flavors. Now, our, our main seasonings that we're going to be using today are Trader Joe's Everyday Seasoning and Trader Joe's 21 Seasoning Salute. These are both wonderful seasoning blends and what I really appreciate, especially about the 21 seasoning, is that it's salt free. So I'm going to add a little bit of these seasonings to the mushrooms and onion and allow that to cook down a little bit. So the bowl, whenever we cook, our mushrooms and our onions is to cook it to the point where the mushrooms are starting to get flimsy and starting to shrink a little bit, but there's still plenty of water left in those mushrooms to cook out. Now you'll notice that Kevin is continually stirring. We keep this wok on about 350 degrees, so it does cook hot. It can cook even hotter if you need it to, but we're going to keep that food moving so everything cooks evenly. Up 
onions are strong. You guys aren't here, but trust me, they're strong. <laughs> so at this point, we're, we're almost ready to start adding in our other vegetables. So what we're doing here is we're making the stuffing for the acorn squash. We have our onion, mushroom, and garlic. And whenever you're ready. Ready? ready. Perfect. All right, we have a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. You can add whatever vegetable you want, whatever you prefer. But we really like steamed mixed vegetables. They're super easy, they're versatile. They're really cheap too. And again, with every layer of new ingredients, just a light dusting of the seasonings that you wanna use. All right, now with the vegetables, uh, we're going to continue cooking them down until the mushrooms have shrunk even more and most of the water has started to evaporate. All right, so we have um, a little <laughs> onions, guys. Onions, <laughs> very strong. <laughs> um, as always, we're gonna add water as needed, but with the added vegetables and especially the mushrooms in here now, they're already giving off a lot of their own water. So at this point, we really don't have to use a lot of added water. Now, one thing to note, whenever we personally cook vegetables here at home, we keep them moving in the wok, just like we did the mushrooms, but this is to prevent anything from burning and sticking. Everything will cook evenly. But what will start to happen is the water that's in here will evaporate and the sugars that are in the vegetables will start to caramelize and brown. And so we'll add just a tiny splash of water to kind of re-dissolve all of those sugars and re-coat all of the vegetables with those delicious flavors. Uh, so in essence, we are flavoring our vegetables on their own. It, it's great, I love plant-based cooking. So whenever, whenever Kevin is ready, I have a cup of brown rice here. We'll add in the rice, the last little bit of seasonings. And at that point, we just wait for the squash to finish cooking and then we can put it back in the oven. So we do have a couple minutes for the vegetables to still cook down. I just wanted to uh, take one more opportunity to talk about uh, my new company, Whole Talks. At Whole Talks, I offer, um, wow, totally blanking. I offer things, I promise, guys. <laughs> Sorry. I offer customized herbal programs coupled with diet recommendations. I also offer lifestyle coaching to correct health conditions. Uh, our mission here at Whole Talks is to provide you better health one plate at a time. And whole tox is the process of detoxifying the body in a holistic manner. So uh, you can find me at wholetox.com. That is H-O-L-T-O-X.com. And you can choose uh, your own tailored herbal protocol, single sessions, and even an eight week detox program where we dig deep to discover and remedy imbalances in the body. Now, Ashley, we I have a quick can I just jump in here for a second? Um, people want to know, number one, is the rice cooked or raw? Great question. The rice is pre-cooked. Oh, okay. Yes. So this and is- And number uh, two, okay. And all you that contact information about your business, I will, I'll get it, make sure I'll go into, because everyone's going to get an email tomorrow from me with this information in it. So Wonderful. somebody, people wanted to know what's the- website, but we'll make sure everyone gets it. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, but yes, uh, as far as the rice goes, this is great to pre-cook. Um, I like to use minute brown rice. It's super fast, super simple, and again, super cheap. That's the beauty of plant-based cooking. It's a win-win all around. We're winning with our health. We're winning with our wallets. Great. And, and Sally can also personally attest to the health benefits. I know that Probably a lot of us in this group can. I myself can. Um, while we're waiting for 
the, uh, the vegetables to cook down. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, I'll talk a little bit about my personal health journey. Uh, so my, my, my health journey really started from the time I was born. I was born uh, premature and jaundice. I was a week old before I was able to come home. And uh, at three years old, was diagnosed with severe asthma and allergies. I had trip upon trip to the doctor's office, allergy testing, hospital for breathing treatments, you name it. Uh, throughout the years, I was always really interested in health. I come from a sick family and I care a lot about my family and their health and I wanted to be a good example to those around me that we can indeed take back control of our health and our lives. So I started to change the milk that I drank when I was a teen. I was tired of being lactose intolerant, so I started drinking plant milk and I noticed that I could breathe better. I still had to stay on my asthma medications, but I was, I was able to do a lot more. Um, about four and a half years ago, I decided to go fully plant-based. And this is where the real, the real fun happens. Um, in that time, I have been able to drop 40 pounds and maintain that weight loss. I have uh, stopped hormonal birth control after being on it for 17 years for PCOS. In that time, I have been able to regulate my hormones naturally. I lowered my cholesterol an amazing 100 points. <laughs> it's just, it's phenomenal, right? And all of this while eating lots of delicious food. At no point do I ever feel restricted. Do I ever feel like I'm missing out? And the health benefits continue to build. Uh, to date, I am off all of my prescription medications. And that is something that I never thought possible. So it's so exciting to be able to share my journey, but also to hear about your journeys because I, I see familiar faces from many of Sally's meetings. Some of you have come to the plant-based support groups that I used to run in the North and I know about your health journeys and what you have been able to accomplish. And it's just, it's phenomenal to see this community grow, to see what Sally and Brittany is doing. But yeah, plans for the win, guys. <laughs> so at this point, the vegetables are um, almost ready. Supplement, oh yeah. So. One last thing that I did want to mention um, while we're waiting on those vegetables is the sea moss water. I had briefly alluded to it at the beginning whenever I was talking about the water that we saute with. Now, um, the reason that I, I bring up sea moss is because it is uh, something that I find a, a really beneficial for our health and something that I would like to share with you guys. But uh, recently I was able to purchase some red sea moss. Um, this is a type of red algae or a red seaweed and it contains 92 of the 102 minerals that our bodies need. So with all of those minerals we are actually able to build healthy strong new tissue. Uh, sea moss is also really high in iodine so it helps improve thyroid function. Whether you're looking to lose weight or gain weight it will help regulate your thyroid, therefore regulating your metabolism. Thi um, sea, uh, sea moss is also really great at strengthening the immune system and the connective tissue and joints because it's so mineral dense. And especially with flu season coming up, it's really important that we stay healthy and we stay strong. Uh, one last thing, a uh, benefit of sea moss is it does help alleviate uh, respiratory issues like pneumonia, bronchitis, and asthma. Uh, it really helps soothe inflammation internally. So with that said, this dry sea moss, um, how do I get it into a, a water? First, I will soak that sea moss overnight in water. And this is actually a little bit of the soak water that I have left over. And it is this water that we have put in here. Um, but with that said, where the real beauty of sea moss comes is uh, from sea moss gel. And so I'll take that 
rehydrated sea moss, blend it with some water, and actually create uh, a gel. And it's this gel that you can use to uh, thicken up soups, smoothies, um, you name it, puddings. And this is a great builder of the body. So we're, we're trying to get this in our bodies in any form that we can. And even though it comes from the sea, once you prepare it, it doesn't have that strong fishy taste. It actually has no taste at all. So it makes it perfect for putting into your recipes for that added nutritional benefit with no unwanted taste. All right. So Kevin said the vegetables are now ready. We're going to add the one cup of cooked brown rice. Let's and as always with our final layer of ingredients, one more quick dusting of our seasoning. So the goal here, the rice is already pre-cooked. We had it in the fridge. So we just want to get that up to room temperature because once we have this ready and we stuff the squash with it, we'll put that back into the oven so there's still a chance for it to heat even more. But this way, we're getting all of those flavors to blend beautifully. Leslie? Yes. I'm going to just, while you're waiting, so many questions about sea moss. <laughs> Where do you buy it? Do you need to soak it? Is it dry? Oh, so I don't know if you want to wait till the end or do it now. Wow. Um, well, you know what? We actually still have about five minutes um, while the squash is cooking. So this would be perfect. All okay. right. So let me... Um, if you guys don't mind, I'll go get the bag of sea moss so you can see. Perfect. Yes. See the sea moss, that's what we want. All right, here we go. So um, it's, it's a little, it's hard to see um, Irish sea moss. I will get you, if you don't mind, Sally, I'll get you the name of the company. I want to say it was like Atlantic Hold Fast, but I'll get that information to you. Um, you can get it in a, a one pound bag. I think their limit is three pounds per person. Um, we, we purchased two pounds of that and I calculated it up. Um, it should last us about 16 months for each of us to use it every single day. Um, getting healthier and healthier all the while. So um, it is an investment, but as always, our health is the most important investment, but it'll last a long time. Um, yes, you do have to soak the sea moss. Um, I'll bring a piece up here. This comes to you dried. It's uh, kind of crunchy almost, right? And you'll, you'll soak this overnight in some clean water and you'll see this blow up. Um, I, I measured 20 grams of dried sea moss and rehydrated, it was 180 grams of rehydrated. So, I mean, it soaked up nine times its amount of weight in water. And so a little tiny bit of sea moss will rehydrate to this massive amount. You really won't need a whole lot. Um, once you have that rehydrated sea moss, you're gonna put that into your blender and add just enough water so it's about an inch under where that sea moss is and blend that really well. Um, and when I say really well, don't, don't be afraid to let your blender just run for a while. You, you really want a smooth consistency. Um, pour that into your favorite glass jar and put a lid on it, throw it in the fridge for up to a week. Um, a, a recommended dose is about two to four tablespoons depending on what your health goals are. Uh, personally, for me, I'm starting at two tablespoons, and if I feel like I wanna work my way up, so be it. Um, but my, my uh, go-to way to intake it right now is through my smoothies in the morning. What other questions? Yeah, Brittany does say that the co-op has it, um, but you, yes, maybe your oh. source might be Oh, that's wonderful. 
Yeah. Okay, so um, with that said, let, let's talk about how to know if you're getting quality sea moss. Um, you will be able to find a lot of sources of sea moss online on Amazon, but beware. Um, just like anything, there are shortcuts that can be taken to get more product faster. Um, sea moss should come from the sea. It grows on rocks. It, it soaks up minerals from the rocks and the ocean. Um, some companies will sell uh, like grown, brine pool grown sea moss. When you get that sea moss, you will see a heavy, a heavy coating of uh, salt on it. And that's not what you're after. Um, this sea moss here literally has no salt on it. Um, I, I don't even know how they do it, but it's so clean. This is what you're after. Um, there are also different types of sea moss. Um, there are yellow varieties, red varieties. I went with the Chondrus crispus. That is technically um, Irish sea moss, and this comes from Maine. Uh, so we have a minute left on that, but with that said, um, I would highly recommend doing a little bit of research. There are so many sources for sea moss out there, um, but for something this important, you want to make sure that you're getting a quality product. All right, so Kevin just, <clears throat> thank you, um, spooned the rice and veggie mixture into a uh, container here. And we have about 30 seconds left on the oven. We'll pull those squash out and then we're gonna stuff them, throw that back in the oven for another 10 minutes and then we'll have plenty of time for more questions. All right. All right, guys, I'm gonna turn you ever so slightly. So, uh, oh, actually, never mind. Don't be running with a knife, guys. Okay, we have our beautiful baked squash. That garlic tahini sauce has started to brown a little bit inside the squash and bake into the flesh there. Now, we're going to take, which one? Beautiful. We're gonna take this and scoop the rice and vegetable mixture into the squash. At which point we'll then drizzle the rest of that garlic tahini sauce over top. Now the garlic tahini sauce um, for the drizzle on top, we've found that it is helpful to add a, a little bit of water to kind of reconstitute this or thin it out just a tiny bit so you can actually drizzle this on top. Otherwise, it's more of a thick paste um, that does not drizzle very well at all. All right, just adding a tiny bit of water, mixing that in. Great, and Kevin has stuffed our acorn squash, how beautiful. And then we're just going to drizzle slash dollop the rest of this sauce onto the vegetables. And then after that, we're going to throw this back in the oven for another 10 minutes or until that garlic tahini sauce starts to brown. And you just, you can't believe the flavors in this. All right, there we go. All right. Nice, thank you. All right, so we have another 10 minutes while that bakes a little bit more. Uh, what other questions do you have? Somebody asked, can you freeze sea moss? Can you freeze it? Yes. Hmm, that I don't know of. Um, what I would feel is when you get your sea moss, it's going to be dry 
And that is how it will keep the best the longest. So I would recommend keeping your sea moss in its dried state um, until you're going to use it. And I would only recommend making about a week's worth at a time. Does anybody else have a question if you want to unmute yourself while there's a pause and ask Leslie or Kevin? Hey, Leslie and Michelle? Yes. Uh, when are you going to make that green herb again? Because it's delicious. Whenever you want, Mom. Okay, babe. <laughs> hey, Kevin. <laughs> Yeah, we have been um, practicing this recipe specifically for this demo. So in the last month, I think we have eaten this maybe four or five times, but we've, we've shared it with both sets of parents and uh, everyone's been really happy. More questions? Yes, yeah, someone wants to know, Pauline wants to know, what is the consistency of the water you use? Oh, great question. Okay, so that water um, is a tiny bit thicker. Uh, ooh, the, the sea moss water itself, that rinse water. Um, this, honestly, it's, it's very liquidy. Um, it has a slight viscosity to it. Just this, the tiniest bit. Um, where you'll really find that viscosity is from the sea moss gel. But uh, it, it's just amazing. The minerals and properties from the sea moss that leach into that soak water is still enough to give this a slight weight, right? Um, but it's still pretty much like water when you're working with it. Are there any other questions people have or that I missed in the chat? I have a question. This is Deb Pence. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering uh, uh, if you have to worry about it coming from the sea. I've uh, some of the cancer coaching programs tell you not to, to really be careful about uh, where you get your products from. And I guess maybe she addressed that, that a lot of places um, the sea, the moss might be contaminated. So I'm just wondering, I guess you just have to be careful where you get it from. I guess yeah. that's my question. Deb, that's such a great question and you're spot on. Unfortunately, our oceans have become um, very polluted over the years. Um, so you do have to be careful of where you get your products. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan of pulling anything from the sea. Um, obviously, but this is something that will grow on the rocks. Um, this specific sea moss comes from, you know, the, the North Atlantic waters. Um, they're colder. They, they do tend to be, at least in this area, cleaner, um, but that's all part of the research that I do recommend everyone do. Um, what, what I feel comfortable with, you may not and vice versa, right? So um, if you do your research and find uh, that you can source it somewhere that you feel more comfortable with, absolutely do so. But I, I, I really appreciate you bringing that up because it is something that we do need to be mindful of. I have a question. What is chickpea miso? Is it a soybean product or is no. it all chickpea? And where does it get the salt? Great question. Let me get the container and we'll go over that. All right, so a few years ago, I went to my naturopath. I had been getting some fake paper cuts on my fingertips, a lot of GI issues, and had a food sensitivity test done. Turns out that I have a pretty big um, soy sensitivity. Um, but a lot of my recipes that I make um, call for miso. So I was able to find this organic chickpea miso. Um, and you'll see it's from Miso Master. Um, reading the ingredients, we have organic handmade rice koji, um, organic rice koji spores, organic whole chickpeas, sun-dried sea salt, and well water. Um, so there is a little bit of sea salt in this, and that's where you're going to get the sodium. But honestly, uh, for two teaspoons, 
yeah, you are getting a little bit of sodium, about 12% of the sodium in your day. Um, but with this said, I would use this sparingly for whenever you want a little bit of salt, but you don't want to just dump a salt shaker in there. Does, did that answer your question? Yes, yes. Yeah. So it's soy free. It and is. It's based on rice, fermented rice instead. Absolutely. Yep. So this is chickpea based, completely soy free. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. So you can get that, it looks like, at Whole Foods or East End Food Co op. People and actually, are... sorbels. Oh, so, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there's another question here. Um, Malini wants to know that, um, oh no, she, she said it's a good sense where. I lost your question. Does Leslie refrigerate the sea moss? Soak water up to a week as well? I'm not sure. Does that make sense? Uh, I, I think so. So the uh, you will soak the sea moss for at least four hours, but I do it overnight. And then after that, um, you can, so, so what, what you'll do is once you get uh, the dry sea moss, I highly recommend you have to really rinse it very well. Put it in a bowl with a lot of clean water, rinse it around. You're going to get some dirt and debris off of it. Pour that water out. And then you're going to pour in some fresh water, give it another little stir, and then set it off to the side for at least four hours, preferably overnight. It'll just blend a little bit better. Then that soak water is what I then strained into my mason jar um, that we um, then water saute with. But this water, as well as the sea moss gel that I made, these will last in the fridge. Um, they, they should last more than a week, but personally, I won't use them past a week. Now, one interesting thing about the sea moss gel is if you happen to make too much, you can also use this as a face mask. Pretty, pretty <laughs> amazing, yeah. All right, so the squash just beeped. We're going to shut the oven off pull that out and show you guys the finished product. Oh, excellent, excellent. So we're gonna plate this and I'll bring it over to you guys, but oh, you can smell the garlic and the tahini and the squash just cooked so well, thank you. Can this be made a day ahead? Actually, we have, yes. Um, we, we've made this and then we've had an extra squash, a half squash left over. Um, you can put it in the fridge. I would say maybe just throw it in the oven on 350 for a little bit to reheat it through, but I don't see why you couldn't. All right, let's get you up here. If I could just get some better lighting. There we go, guys. All right, we have a squash with the vegetables. And I'm just gonna take a, a quick bite of this. I'm sorry that I can't be sharing this with you, but so the squash is tender. We're gonna get a bite of the rice, the veggies. Oh, this amazing garlic tahini sauce. Mm, mm-hmm. Friends, this is delicious. Mm. Wow. Well, that is it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining us here tonight. Does anyone else have any questions? Donna wants to know what kind of mixed vegetables were you using? We get a bag of these steamed mixed vegetables. So it has corn, carrots, green beans, and peas. Yeah. So but you could use whatever you want. We've used it with, um, so one of our parents doesn't like peas. And so we had to tweak this recipe before and get a, a mixed vegetable that didn't have peas in it. So you can tailor this however you want. Well, as I said, everyone will be getting your information, Leslie, and the 
recipe tomorrow and the link to the YouTube. Hey, Leslie. Yes. Um, can you use like butternut squash, you think? Ooh. You know, Mom, that's a, that's a great question. I don't see why not. The, the squash will give it a slightly different flavor. I feel like the butternut squash, do you think? Mm -hmm. I, absolutely. I mean, if anything, you'll have a bigger boat, right? Um, honestly, guys, one of these squash, the, just the half, is so filling. Um, we often have a side dish of um, a vegetable. Um, Kevin has made us spicy asparagus and mushrooms. You could even do caramel Brussels sprouts, sauteed spinach, any kind of vegetable on the side, but this alone is so filling. Sometimes it's hard to finish just one. So if you do the butternut squash, I feel like it would be, um, if you cut that in half and then split that in half. Okay, another thing is the delicata squash is a lot smaller and they're kind of naturally sweet. It's kind of like a, uh, a mixture of a butternut and I believe an egg corn. And it's kind of like a sweet potato and it's, uh, it basically can fit in the palm of your hand, but I'm thinking that's another one we could try. So Kevin, we're putting our order in. I'll even give you the supplies if you gotta make it, buddy. You know it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> great, that's a great point. So you um, feel free to change out the squash then. If there's another squash that you would like to try this in, I don't see why that wouldn't work. Um, the flavors will change ever so slightly, but I mean, again, is such a versatile dish with amazing flavors. I think you won't be disappointed no matter what you try. Leslie, I'm just dying to know how it tastes. Can you describe it? It's similar to what? Can you tell me? Not this, just delicious, it's similar to what? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, the garlic tahini sauce is almost cheesy. I mean, it gives you that oh, really? same yeah, it gives you that same mouthfeel, you know, that creamy mouthfeel that you get with like melted cheese. Absolutely. Whoa. So it's cheesy. Um, you have a little bit of the garlic. You do taste, I mean, oh, what else? It's almost kind of like a, the, the tahini sauce itself is almost like a peanut buttery, you know, like she said, cheesy. Yeah. It, it's a really neat um, texture feel in your mouth with like the rice and the veggies. Um, it just, it all pairs together really nicely. It's, it's a really nice combination of flavors. That's very strange because you did not use nutritional yeast at all. Right. Yeah. Right. And actually yeah. I was, I was just telling Kevin the other day that I think that this garlic tahini sauce would be even cheesier if you added nooch to it. I mm. think that that would really make it cheesy. But I would, I would recommend trying the sauce as is uh, because um, actually his father pointed out, uh, is there cheese in here? No. Oh. <laughs> and also, can you, um, can you use a uh, sweet potato instead of the, I, I know you need the hard texture of the squash, but how about if you just want sweet potato, it's faster. I don't know. Right. right. That's a good question. Um, we have had a sweet potato on the side with this, with a little bit of maple syrup. Um, but if you were to try um, actually kind of scooping out some of that sweet potato um, and adding the rice and veggie mixture, I bet that would be delicious, especially with that garlic tahini sauce. It's worth a shot. Barbara wants to know where you got your sea moss. Yes, I will send you the company. Um, I believe the company was at the Atlantic Holdfast Company, but I will get you those um, those details as soon as we're off here. Right. I'm so happy everyone's so interested in the sea moss because I'm telling you what, guys, <laughs> this uh, this is a game changer. You want strong bones, you want uh, healthy lungs. This is it among other things, of course, but never hurts. And just one more here. I see Lori mentioned the fact you could use pumpkin. Question, you know, perhaps, oh. sure. 
what about like a small, like a, a pie, like a pie pumpkin, you know, like a... To be honest, the, the filling that we used in this, uh, the original recipe for this was actually just the acorn squash uh, cut down into slivers with the tahini sauce kind of drizzled over top. Uh, to be honest, we were looking for something a little more filling and I just had, um, you know, the ambition to fill something up, you know, with, uh, you know, a filling. So I just decided to take some of the extra veggies that we had and some rice and mix it together. Uh, you could probably use this filling for just about any vegetable that you want to stuff. Uh, I don't see why you couldn't. Uh, you know, like uh, Leslie said, the tahini sauce is such an interesting sauce. It's about experimenting in two degree. That's, in my personal opinion, one of the best things about plant-based, you know, dieting and, and eating is you have so many abundance of flavors and things that you can mix together and try, and it's really great. Yeah. Pumpkin Leslie, would be what about quinoa? I'm sorry? What about quinoa? Hmm. Instead of putting rice in, why don't we make it some time with quinoa? Actually, great, great point. So one time we did use a little bit of quinoa. We actually split um, the filling. It was half quinoa and half brown rice. And that will give you extra protein. Um, if you're looking for a protein kick, um, not to mention it's a whole protein. Uh, but yeah, actually that's a, that's a great idea. If you, if you don't have enough brown rice, if you don't want all quinoa, you can certainly split the two. How would you compare um hemp with uh sea moss hemp hearts hemp you know the hemp seeds um you know they in terms of the density you know in, in terms of nutrient density mm -hmm. or do they have a different profile oh okay good question um no hemp hearts also very high in protein um I am not familiar enough with the, the hemp profile itself. I've um, been doing a lot of research recently on the sea moss, um, specifically for its high mineral content. Um, it's the bean. Go ahead. I'm sorry, was there more? No, no, no. It's just the mineral is the key in the sea moss. Okay. It is, it is definitely one of the keys, yes. Uh, it's a very rich... Um, iodine source, so it's good for your thyroid, your metabolism, um, body temperature, and it actually helps reduce inflammation in our mucous membranes, which lines the entire body, including our lungs. Um, so really, my, my goal right now is, especially as it gets colder, um, you know, I want to strengthen my immune system. So I might be able to get a uh, complete protein from uh, hemp or other sources, but right now I'm really interested in building up my system with all those uh, great minerals. Great question. And Barbara and wants to know, where did you buy your electric walk? Uh, so actually, uh, this electric walk was uh, a gift uh, from my parents. It is probably one of my favorite cooking uh, things that we have. I'm not exactly sure where they got it, but I would imagine uh, you could get your electric wok from Target or, you know, any place that sells cooking appliances. Honestly, guys, I don't even see a brand name on this, um, but I have seen it on Amazon and certainly a lot of, um, a lot of stores will probably carry something similar, but it's, it's amazing. Such a game changer. That in the Instant Pot. Whew. Sorry, yeah. Instant Pot. <laughs> Any other questions? Have you ever air, do you think the air fryer would be okay in baking the uh, the acorn or will that be too fried? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I, I don't think, I'm not sure if the air fryer would be able to really cook the inside of the squash, like what we're looking for. It might do more work on the outside. So for the squash, I would still recommend cooking that in the oven. Mm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And we have one more question for you. Leslie, would you say the sea moss would benefit hormone balance? Yes. Yes, that is something that it does help regulate. Um, if, if we think about the body as a whole, anytime we are strengthening and cleaning one part, 
we are strengthening and cleaning the whole organism, the whole vessel. Um, so if we are giving our bodies and, and our cells all the constituents that they need to produce new healthy tissue, then we can definitely um, you know, assume that our organs and our glands are also being regenerated because what are they made up of? A bunch of cells. Um, so anytime we strengthen uh, you know, the, the smallest, we're strengthening the biggest. So yes, absolutely hormone regulation. Well, that is, um, sea moss seems to be the ingredient of the day here. I want to say that. Um, this was delightful. You two are delightful. And my parting thought is that you need your own cooking channel too. You got you got to, you got to go professional because this is so fun. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, I, eventually we will have a cookbook coming. So I mean, no, no time soon, but eventually, yes. Um, again, Sally and Brittany, thank you so very much for this. This was so much fun. Thank you each and every one of you for joining us tonight. Let us know if you try this dish and what you think of it. Perfect. Again, thank you. And enjoy. Go eat. Will do. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Bye. Love you. Bye.